Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden, and welcome to the Geek Group. We got a really cool toy in the other day, which is a very large picker x-ray transformer, and there's a sticker on the side here that says thoriated valves, which just gets me curious. Um, valves in this context are vacuum tubes, and I, as everybody knows, I got kind of a thing for vacuum tubes. So we're going to do some digging inside. Now, I years ago did an autopsy of an x-ray transformer, and you can find it here on our channel. It may be the very first equipment autopsy we ever did. So this won't be a full autopsy, but we'll do some digging around inside and get a look. What today is all about is exploring inside an x-ray transformer, specifically to convert it from DC output to AC output. So I'll show you what you would have to do to do that, because with this one, I don't know what powers the vacuum tubes, like for the heaters and all that stuff to make them work. So I wanna learn about that. So let's do some digging. It's gonna start with gloves. When you're working on this stuff, gloves are a good idea. I like the black ones better than the blue, so we're gonna go with that. And we're gonna need a Batman. Batman, if you would, please. Hop in the forklift. I'm going to loosen all the top bolts and then we'll do the lift. X-ray transformers are built in kind of a cool way where almost always they have a ring of bolts around the top and that ring of bolts holds the lid to the tank because the tank's full of oil. So all the guts inside the transformer and all of its accessories actually hang from the lid. So you have to take all the bolts off in order to take the lid off and you lift up the lid to work on anything inside. An x-ray transformer is a high voltage, low current DC power supply, usually put in 240 volts single phase AC and you get out between 70, the smallest ones I've seen are about 40,000 volts, the biggest ones I've ever seen are about uh, 150,000 volts DC output. Your input goes in here through these, and the outputs come out through big federal connectors. All right, Batman, come on in, easy. All right, come on in. Up. Come on in some more. Keep coming. All right, hold right there. You set your parking brake. Come on up slow. We'll get a look inside. Easy, Batman. Yeah, they pretty much emptied it already. Okay, stop right there. Wow, look at those tubes. Those are beautiful. Batman, can you get me a couple pieces of two by four, about three feet long? Thank you. All right, let's take a quick look. We're gonna get more in depth into this in a second, but I just wanna take a quick look at some of the major components inside to give you an idea what this is. Over on the end, this is the actual transformer itself. And since we're not gonna really use this anymore, I can pop this open. That's metal shielding. On the other side is the transformer. We'll change our angle in a bit to get a look at it, but this is the high voltage transformer here. And all the lower power stuff is over on this side with the, the rectifiers and all that. All right, come on up just a little bit. Couple inches. All right. Oh, ho. Oh. 
Inches, not feet. That'll work good right there. All right, come on down easy. Excellent. All right, take, just take the slack out. Good, just hold it right there. Set the parking brake, shut it off. Thank you, sir. Just gonna set this up here. We're not gonna need it. All right, now that it's open, let's take a look around. The main components inside, you can see it's really simple. There really isn't a whole lot to it. The main components inside are the two tubes here, and there's two tubes on the back. That's the rectification stage. And then the big transformer's over here. And that's all there is to it. It's, it's a pretty simple system. The low voltage comes into here through the primary windings, comes out as high voltage from the secondary windings, goes through the four rectification tubes, comes out as DC. Now, there's some smaller transformers in here. You can see these windings here. There's four down below, and then these two up here. And these are used for current measuring because there's a lot more than just the high voltage outputs. It has to have proper metering and everything. And they're also used as the low voltage transformers for the filaments in these tubes and the filaments in the x-ray tube as well. Now the only parts in here that I'm really interested in are salvaging these tubes. And to do that, I'm gonna take the tube and the little wires on top because I want these clips. But these are the tubes themselves. I'm pretty sure these tubes are some type of rectifier. And it says they're thoriated which is pretty cool. Let's dump the oil out of the top. Now the ID on the tubes is, uh, here, I'll see if you can get a close up on that. It's VR17C. It says five volt, 6.8 amps. I'm pretty sure that five volt, 6.8 amps is the filament winding. Now it's got, this is really cool. It's got a regular light bulb Edison base on the bottom and I think that'll fit a standard Edison base and I might just for kicks try putting 5 volts at 6.8 amps on there and see what this will do. We might be able to get the tubes to light up. Now what I think happens is one end will be the cathode, one end will be the anode. This is probably the anode. That's my guess. I could be totally wrong. And then between these two connections we put 5 volts at 6.8 amps but between here and here It'll take like maybe 50,000 volts or something. I don't know, but it'll be pretty easy to find out. And we'll look at that in a little bit. But for now, let's just get them removed safely. Now, if you wanna convert this power supply from DC to AC, all you'd have to do is remove these rectifiers and then take whatever connection goes into these, looks like right here that goes up to the transformer you make sure, and you connect that up to the high voltage outputs, and now instead of outputting DC, it'll output AC. And then you can use the rectifiers for something else. I got two more back here, and these will come out the same way. And the whole thing's just full of mineral oil, and there's a nice sticker on it that tells me it's full of Shell Dialax, which is really, really good transformer oil. It is my favorite, in fact. So we're gonna save all that and use it in High Voltage Lab for other things. Because it's kind of expensive stuff. I don't wanna just throw it away. So there is our beautiful quad set of rectifier tubes. And we can see some of the other interesting things in here. Like this part right here, these two are chained together and you can see they're high voltage switches. Which tells me that somewhere, no, it's up on top. This box up on top has some kind of solenoid that moves these switches in and out of play. We should take a look at that while we've got this open. So. Since we're up in the clean parts, I'll take my gloves off. 
because when you go from the oily side to the clean side, you want to not bring any extra oil with you. I'm going to take off the nut on the back. Take this one off. Oh yeah, look at that. Inside here, it's a whole it's a whole gear motor thing. That's neat. Now as I move that, you can see this moving down here. And you can see these contacts over here move out and they're gonna head over to the other one. And this contact's gonna do the same thing. It takes a lot of motion to get there, but you can see the wiper coming around. And that's just a really big relay. And that's going to come in and grabs this contact. And now it's good. Now better other ones are in play too. Yeah, they're all lined up. Perfect. That's really neat. And that just lets you choose between two sets of contacts. So you could actually use one power supply for two different x-ray heads and just switch from one to the other. All right, so that's the extraction from the transformer. When we come back right after this, we're gonna see if we can get one of these to glow. I learned how to run a machine shop. Set up an enterprise level server. Program nine foot robots. Make lightning. Edit video. I'm building a radio station. Light bulb terrarium. A high performance electric car. I'm a CNC geek. Computer geek. Robot geek. Physics geek. AV geek. I'm a radio geek. Craft geek. Car buff. No matter what kind of geek you are, we've got a place for you here at the Geek Group. Come join us. We build awesome. All right, we're back and we've got a power supply set up because this was so conveniently labeled with five volts at 6.8 amps and it has an Edison base. Now, we're not gonna get the really cool blue glow out of it, I don't think. What I'm, the, the best I can hope for out of this is probably just a little orange glow way up inside there where the filament is. But we've got a base wired up, so I'm going to, using the back of my hand, hold the base down while I screw that in. Okay, so that's screwed in and we should have enough clearance off the metal lid to not arc anything out. And it's only five volts, so it's not that big a deal. And at five volts, since the breakdown voltage of air is 300 volts, it would have to actually touch to arc anything out. So we'll set our current all the way down, set our voltage all the way down, fire up our power supply, and now we'll bring that up to it was five volts at, I think 5.8 amps. Five volts at 6.8 amps. So we'll bring this up to five volts. I'll bring this up to six amps. Now that's, that's a pretty delicate adjustment there. I'm not getting anything out of that. I don't know if it's on or not. <laughs> really? I don't know. You want the Let's find out. <laughs> we are such dorks. All the way down, speed. Well, now it's taken something. Okay. I want to ease that up. Make sure I get our numbers right. 5.8 amps, 5 volts. So we'll take that up. 5 volts. That's about 5.8 amps. And you can see it glowing really well, actually. 
Look at that. I don't know how well you guys can see that, but from down here you can really see the filament. That's really cool. Now, to learn more about what's actually happening inside there, I want you guys to check out this Wikipedia article, and that covers the basics of what's happening. This is, this is a vacuum tube, and you're getting, that's the, the heater up in there, the filament heater, and that starts the whole process, and what this is allowing is electricity to pass through one way and not the other. This is acting as a diode. This is part of a rectifier, and when you put all four of them together, you're getting a full wave bridge rectifier. All right, so we have successfully removed our rectifier tube. We've proven that it works. We've gotten everything all set. And now these are going to go into stock in the high voltage lab here at the Geek Groups Galactic headquarters where another member will come along and build something cool out of them. What I would personally like to see is four of these built into a beautiful full wave bridge rectifier, high voltage setup with filament power supplies and all that. I think that'd be really cool. So you guys have fun. I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group, and you could be the member that does this. You could come in and take this on as a project and have a lot of fun doing it. Learn more about The Geek Group at thegeekgroup.org, and as always, we'll see you next time. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.